Thank you. And you know what's so interesting is that the poems that Francis chose, the poem that Francis chose, and um, Cone Photograph as well, and um, the Brutal End are all poems that occurred in Provincetown, which I think was this, you know, I think as we were talking about, as you all were talking about this windowless room, I was thinking of like what a fantastic receptacle it was to take everything I was learning from my schooling mm -hmm. into this stark <laughs> space, you know, and then to have to deal with it, you know, to kind of deal with, you know, violation and to have to delineate it. So I'm so happy that the poems that surfaced for you and that were so beautifully rendered, re-rendered, came from, I think, that place. Um, so I'm going to try my best to read some poems that I've never, I haven't read in, I think, in a, except for once in St. Mark's, but I never saw them as a book. But I'll, I'll, I think it might be fun to hear these um, poems called the Verheliolian Spaces. And I'll just give a little bit of backdrop that these were kind of these uh, uh, assaults on the chatter that was happening in the Cave Cana Lister. Lots of births, lots of deaths, lots of awards. So one of the things, and yeah, there's really interesting things that people were saying somehow, but I decided to just like, you know, it, just blast them <laughs> with these gigantic um, um, entries into the space. So I'm going to read some of these. <clears throat> And they have these footnotes, which I don't quite know how I'll, I'll perform, but we'll figure it out. Do, do. Verhelio in space for the bulimia method. Was thinking about voice today while practicing on the train, Ariel singing to Prospero in the Tempest, and love the part that go, the burden, hark, hark, bow, wow, the watchdog bark, bow, wow, hark, hark. I hear the strain of shutting Chanticleer say, cock a doodle doo, cry cock a doodle doo. Upon singing, I was flattered to find out that my student said I sounded just like Justin Timberlake. <laughs> <laughs> and I really gave it to them near the end with a lilting thing I learned to do with my singing voice by listening obsessively to the whole of Tracy Chapman for the last half of my life. Cry cock a doodle doo, cry cock two weeks in a Virginia jail for my That's not in the book, but I thought I <laughs> Which, of course, is less important than the tone of Ariel's voice, but singing taught me a little something about blackness and being as a collective sight and about my trust in the word fun. Mm -hmm. Three, footnote. In Wayne Kestenbaum's Cleavage, a book you should all know, he writes about fun or promises to write more about fun in another context beside, or maybe besides, his brilliant shopping for a new Prada suit. I myself, entrapped by Calvin Klein and sometimes Hugo Boss, Prada not yet, I do have fellowships to win. <laughs> Recession, H&M, rocking it out. <laughs> Without my mother, I have to ask her how to be more Sycorax sexy later on this afternoon. She wants me to come along. She has a date with her very elegant editor, which means tea and lots of paper, XXXXX. She's working on a piece about the dance company Pina Bausch and the Sublime or something, more riffing on wet walrus bodies as anti-castration narratives. She's deft and crafty that way. Carmelina, my mother, says one of her secrets to effective critical readings of plays or the ballet is to make sure to bring toothpicks to every performance, to always wear easily removable shoes, and to make sure to communicate, if possible, by voice mm. one's enjoyment. Mm -hmm. We once got kicked out of some Swedish avant-garde version of the Nutcracker because my very tiny mother threw her very big, expensive day bag at the lead dancer who was kissing the audience and wrote me with something like, fuck, 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 fuck you, fuck, Nutcracker. Ariel's <laughs> voice is like my mother's after she agrees to write for publications or to send things to editors or to simply meet with them. She is such a good schmoozer, all truth and elegance. Ariel's voice is like my mother's the moment she decides to speak without having to resort to such drastic anti-communitive measures like violence, despite its working for her most of the time. <laughs> Though, unlike Ariel, my mother is hardly slave-like and refuses to call an audience that cannot relate to her tactics in isolation. Mm. A more simple answer is that this space in where you read 
is a place for a hydrant collective voice despite one's own obsessions or because of them as the thematics towards loss or loss of control over one's overt poetic practices. At least this is what my mother would say. Or it's like a mirror. <laughs> I can care less. But care deeply about foreign matters, new modes, obsessions, and have been thinking about call and repose, not call and response, for the last few months in my writing and reading. Four, call and repose is from my mother's first novel, still untranslated in English, Mogul Baboy Biloy. I'm sorry, let me get the pronunciation right. Mogul Baboy Bilong Inag. Let me make that up. <laughs> And now, what could the thematics gasp, loss, silence, hiding, hindrances, gaps, cuts, slits, vacancies, holes, gasp, desecrations, olives, olives pose or manifest or repose or gasp, anti manifest? Now, what is this if not an overt thematics? The, the idea here is that recognizing failure, the fail, the exhausted, is an embrace, wrecked cognition. Something after the spirit of my mother's thinking in her novel, Maguk Baboy Bilongi Nak, a wonderful village tale that ends in basic hand-to-hand -hand combat between some very angry darkies. <laughs> to go under, to go down, to avoid, to sink, to slip, to see the idea of confronting the head-on collision and being found. What a shame. I'm lost all the time. Lost just enough to know that this loss is part of an aesthetic economy that involves me in more evolutional orders than I can eat. But I keep stuffing my face, eating with my mouth open, and vomiting like a good bulimic. I am writing a poetry toward the bulimic. I am writing notes to all casual bulimics. I am healthy and had for lunch today the most amazing chicken salad and seventh grade masterpiece made by a woman that I felt I had to charm in order to get the bigger plate that featured the slippery chips and a big plastic pickle. 